All right, good morning, guys. Uh, this is episode number seven of Bus Stop Blogs, where uh, I give you uh, a weekly recap of what we've been doing at the Iron Yard. So um, we are about halfway through, or I guess more than halfway through, the back end fundamentals section of the course. And so um, this has probably been the hardest week that I personally have had uh, so far at the Iron Yard. Uh, but whenever, I mean, whenever you're having a hard week, if you can push through it, usually that's also the most rewarding week. And so um, I'd say that's probably been the case. This has been my hardest week, but also my best week, I think. Uh, so the main reason this week was so difficult was because of one day in particular where we were learning about user authentication. And so um, I don't know if you've ever done that before, uh, but it's basically where you're verifying someone's credentials with a, say maybe a username or password, or it could be with a, uh, like logging in with their Twitter account or Facebook account or Google account or whatever. Um, and so that is a very important feature to have on many websites. Um, but it is also very tedious to set up uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, there's a whole lot that goes into it as far as uh, the way you kind of have to map and route all of your code between your, your different files. Um, and there's all of this, there's a lot of kind of behind the scenes magic that happens with a lot of the code and the NPM packages that you install. Um, and then the other reason I think that it's difficult for a lot of people um, is that it's one of those things that you set up once per, per site, maybe, uh, if the site needs it, and then you don't do it anymore, you know? So it's not like something that you're going to, uh, you know, code out over and over and over on, the, on a daily basis. Uh, most likely that's not, that's not what you're doing. And so... Um, Anyway, I just, you know, I'm definitely not at a point right now where I can just sit down and, and uh, you know, type out some user authentication uh, like it's nothing. You know, I definitely have to use a lot of uh, references and, and go slow, but I can get it working and it's awesome. It's a cool feature because, you know, obviously there's a lot you can do um, if if your users are required to, to sign in. So um, that, that's that been pretty cool. <clears throat> this week we've been doing uh, a lot of databases. <clears throat> we were doing Mongoose, or sorry, Mongo, uh, a lot last week. And we, we're still doing MongoDB at the beginning of this week, but this time now using Mongoose uh, with it, which is definitely my preferred method. Um, that's the way that I learned uh, initially and it's just, it's a lot easier. Um, it's less code to write, which is always better. Um, and it makes your code cleaner. You can write it faster. Uh, it's easier to maintain, you know? So uh, it's a good thing. And uh, yeah, so um, Mongo is a non-relational database, uh, which basically means that you can uh, take your uh, whatever your we call it a schema uh, that's think of it as like just a general template for the way you're going to store your data so for example um, you know your schema might be that uh, you might have a schema for users who are going to log into your site and so you'll have something like a username and a password and maybe their their full name and their email address and their phone number or something you know uh, you can use your imagination to come up with, with whatever other fields you might think. Um, and, and with each of those two, you can, make them, uh, you can make them required. You can make it so that they have to be unique. For example, a username, you would want a username to be unique. Um, and, but, uh, and then obviously required as well. But maybe their email address is not required, you know? Um, so that's one of the things that you can do with, uh, with databases. What makes it non-relational is that you can go in 
and add a piece of data for a single user on the fly and it not affect the other users. So, for example, let's say that in your schema, you did not have phone number as one of your fields, but then you decide, hey, I want this user, I want to add their phone number to it. You can just add it to only that user. Um, and MongoDB says, yeah, that's cool. Um, the other users don't have to have a phone number field. Uh, and so there is some benefit to that. Um, the other type of database are relational databases, also known as SQL. Um, and so we've been learning uh, Postgres uh, the past couple days, and that is a relational database, which means that every single, uh, in this case, user, uh, if I'm gonna stick with this user's example, every user in the database has the uh, same fields uh, of data. Even if they're not all filled out, they exist. And so um, there are benefits to that, obviously, but um, I personally, I think I like non-relational databases so far. Um, it's probably just because I've used it more. Um, but so far for everything I've had to build, I prefer to use uh, MongoDB. So that's just kind of where I am with that. Um, it's fun, databases are fun, but it's definitely not something that I would want to do exclusively. I don't want to be a back-end dev. Um, I either want to be full stack or front end. And so um, if, I, if I had a full stack job doing like a mean stack or maybe a MERN stack, if you're using React, um, I could be cool with that. But um, I wouldn't want to be just a back-end guy. So we'll see. Um, on that note, I have been job searching. Um, there are three cities I'm really looking at. Uh, those three are Dallas, Austin, and Raleigh, North Carolina. So I'm um, looking at jobs in those three places and the job search is going pretty well. Um, so we'll see what happens, but um, I'm definitely excited about the future for sure. Um, I'd say the biggest highlight of the week for me is um, this one assignment that we have that we've kind of been uh, going back and improving over the past few weeks is this daily assignment that we had where basically we had this uh, directory of users. The example that we had were they were all like robots or something, um, but kind of imagine something like LinkedIn, you know, where um, you've got occupational data for each user and kind of what their skills are and, and where they're from and all that. And so, you know, uh, originally the assignment was just to help us uh, learn how to manage data and render data to the page um, using like mustache templating and that kind of stuff. Um, and so as always, I like to take our projects and, and take them a few steps further. So uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, we had an assignment to add user authentication to that uh, LinkedIn-like website that we built. And so got that going. That was fine. Um, you know, I had that done by the end of the day. And then I decided yesterday to add some more stuff to it. So um, now I've got it to where there's kind of like a message feature where one user can message the other and uh, there's a little notifi notification that pops up if someone has a message and from that message you can see the, the date that the message was sent, you can reply to the message, uh, you can click on the user's name and you'll be taken to that user's profile page. It's kind of cool. So um, I'm going to expand on this a little bit more and I think I'm going to shoot a quick video of, of that website to kind of just show you what all is happening. But um, that's using Mongo Express and Node. Um, 
So it's pretty cool. I really, really like it. Um, there's a blog site that I built probably about a month or two ago that now, now that I've got some user authentication stuff happening, I think I just dropped my mic. Now that I've got some user authentication stuff happening, um, I want to add that to the blog site and then really make it into something powerful. Um, speaking of big projects, I have uh, figured out what I want to do for my final project. And so right now I'm going to keep a tight lid on it, but I am really excited about it. Um, it's going to be cool. It's going to be really, really cool and something practical that um, musicians can use. Um, particularly performing musicians can use. And so um, really, I'm really excited about it. Uh, so that's all I'm gonna say for now, um, but look for that to be kind of done in October. So I'm gonna probably get started on it this weekend, at least just planning out uh, how everything's gonna go. I haven't really learned a ton of React yet, and I know that um, this project will use React and hopefully React Native also to kind of make a mobile app out of it. So we'll see. Um, but I definitely don't know enough React yet to really start on the project. So, but I can be planning and maybe doing some, some sketches and that kind of thing. So anyway, really exciting stuff going on. I love programming. Uh, this is definitely, um, this was definitely a good career move. Um, every day I wake up eager to come in and get to work and learn and explore and, and just see how much I can push myself in the projects I'm doing. Um, it's such a fulfilling career for me, you know. Um, I just love it. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to getting a job and starting my career. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I will see you next week.